However, we know that carbon can also form double or pi bonds with other carbon atoms. And an sp3 hybridization of orbitals wouldn't allow this to happen. This is because when forming a pi bond, p-shaped orbitals from two carbon atoms have to overlap sideways, above and below a sigma bond between the two atoms. If two sp3 hybridized carbon atoms bond together with a sigma bond, the remaining three sp3 hybridized orbitals aren't really p-shaped and they are all pointing away from each carbon, meaning there is no way that two can overlap sideways and form a pi bond. In order to form a pi bond then, each carbon atom has to have a half-filled p orbital that isn't hybridized. For this to be the case, only three of the four outer orbitals of the carbon atoms can hybridize the 2s and two of the 2p orbitals, leaving one of the half-filled p orbitals unhybridized and free to make a pi bond. This means three hybrid orbitals can form and they are referred to as sp2, as they are formed from one s orbital and two p orbitals, sp2. Now, as a sigma bond forms between the two sp2 hybrid orbitals from two different carbon atoms, the unhybridized half-filled p orbitals on each atom can overlap sideways of each other, forming a pi bond. Due to the electrons in the p orbitals repelling the electrons in the sp2 hybrid orbitals, the sp2 hybrid orbitals all end up in the same plane, essentially flat. The sp2 orbitals also repel each other, meaning they end up equally far apart giving bond angles of approximately 120 degrees and a trigonal planar arrangement.